Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Marcus, I am the Weirdo with the Beardo, and this is my explanation on Iris and Gain. Here we go. Woo! Okay, so how this video is going to work is I'm going to explain Iris and Gain to you, and then I am going to show you what both of those things do on the camera down there. So firstly, I'm gonna tackle Iris. Iris has a few different names. You've got Iris, Aperture, F-Stop, and if you go more professional, you have T-Stop, at which point I'm hoping that you would know what you're doing with this sort of stuff anyway. So uh, I'm not gonna bother about going into T-Stops. But yeah, you've got Aperture, Iris, and F-Stop. They're the main three things. So if you ever see anything to do with that, it's all relating to what I'm gonna talk about now. And essentially, you've got your lens and your camera in between the two somewhere. I think you might, might actually be in the lens. There is a circular opening that opens and closes, depending on what you choose. Now, the bigger the hole, the bigger the iris, the aperture, the more light that can go through and hit the sensor, which means it's gonna be brighter. Now that also has an effect with the uh, depth of field. If you don't know what depth of field is, it's essentially where something in the foreground is in focus, something in the background is out of focus, or vice versa, or you know, so something in shot is in focus, something's out of shot. That is depth of field, where there's a, a, a central focal point, essentially. But anyway, so the bigger the hole, the narrower the depth of field is, which means that you're gonna have much more of a precise location of what's gonna be in focus. So obviously that could be quite detailed if you're focusing right onto someone's face and you focus on a, a bead of sweat dripping down their face, for example, and their nose could be out of focus, or it could literally just be like someone standing there and then the field in the background out of focus, something like that. But essentially that's what that is. The opposite, the smaller the hole, the less light that can go through and hit the sensor, and also, the wider the depth of field is allows more things to be in focus in the frame. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky. If you're talking about f-stops, it, it gets a bit confusing because the wider the hole, the smaller the number is, the smaller the f-stop is, like 4.5 or, or 2.1 or whatever it is. The smaller the hole, the bigger the number. So that's where it gets a little bit confusing. Once again, I will demonstrate that in a moment as camera on the floor waiting for you. But that is essentially your iris, your aperture, your f-stop, whatever it is you want to call it. So the next thing I want to talk about is gain. Or if you're using uh, digital SLRs or anything like that, you're more than likely going to be referring to ISO. They're exactly the same thing. Gain on video cameras, ISO on DSLRs. Um, and it's quite a simple concept, really. All it is, is imagine you've taken an image and you put it into an image editing software like Photoshop and you just either brighten it or darken it. Essentially, it's the same thing. You're just doing it in camera as opposed to doing it in your editing software. That is essentially what it is. Um, it just makes the image darker or brighter. Now, obviously, there are pros and cons to using it. Uh, the pro is obviously you can use gain or ISO to, to boost up the light in a bit while you're out and about if it is dark outside. The con with it, unfortunately, is it sort of makes it a little bit grainy. Now, this could be what you're after. You could be after like a grainy effect, but if you want it really, really smooth, ideally you want a low ISO or a low gain. Um, ideally, you want it, if you're working with gain, it needs to be around sort of zero. Ideally, that's that's a good place to be. And if you're working with DSLRs, I tend to find about 800, 400 or 800 are a good place to start with the ISO. If you start getting a bit too high, then you start seeing it quite grainy. And hopefully, I will demonstrate that, that you will be able to see that. Um, a little bit on, on demonstration down there. So without further ado, I think I should demonstrate. I'm gonna now go over to this camera, so I'm gonna be out of this frame, I'll be down there, um, but hopefully you'll still be able to hear me okay. Okay, so here we have a group mug, and in the background we have a uh, film called Girls Just Want To Have Fun. That was actually a gift to me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, essentially as you can see, we have group in the foreground just here, and we have girls just want to have fun in the background over here. The DVD itself is uh, quite significantly out of focus. Now, what I have this set to is f5.6, that's the aperture. I have the gain at 12 dB, and the shutter speed is at 50. So what I'm gonna do, um, with the aperture being quite wide open at 5.6, it's not massively open, but it's, it's quite wide. I'm just gonna boost that up, so it's gonna now be, uh, let's have a look, let's, so as, as I'm dialing it up, it's at the moment it's on the F11. Um, obviously as you can see, it's getting much, much darker. So we're now at F16. I'm gonna leave it there for a second, and I'm gonna boost the gain up. There we go. So it's still a little bit dark. However, you can see 
that um, girls just want to have fun DVD in the background is a lot more in focus than it was in the previous shot and I'll put a side by side here for you now. So there we go, if I now boost it back down, so that's on F16, F14, 13, 11 and so on and so forth, I'll keep going down, it's making the image a lot brighter. I'm gonna go all the way down to 5.6, that's as far as I can go on this camera with it zoomed in where it is. And I'm gonna boost that up once more. And there we go. So hopefully you can see the difference between um, where the f-stop and the ISO is. Um, I'm also just gonna quickly, while we're here, I'm just gonna change, I'm just doing something in the settings really quickly. Um, I'm gonna change the gain to 30. So we're now maxed out on the gain. And I'm just gonna boost that up. So that is the maximum gain that we can get on this camera. And now I'm just gonna push the, IS, uh, the aperture up once more. So that's far too dark. But essentially, I might even brighten this up in post just so you can see. Um, but yeah, that's what we can see. And everything, pretty much everything now is in focus. If you can see it, um, it's quite dark. But I'm just gonna bring that back down and hopefully we should start to see the DVD go out of focus before it sort of blows out and gets a bit too bright. There we go, it's starting to go out of focus there. And there we go, and hopefully, like I say, that because the gain is quite high, yeah, I can actually see it on the little monitor already, that it is um, quite significantly grainy, especially around Groot. If you look around Groot's head around here, um, it, it's pretty grainy around there. So there we have it. That is my explanation for iris and gain. I really hope that you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it. Also put in the comments down below that you'd like to. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and click on that little notification bell to keep up to date with the latest and greatest from yours truly. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.